Today's Easter Sunday. What is Easter all about? Well, it all comes from this Bible here, doesn't it? Because this Bible, year after year, month after month, day after day, is the world's bestseller. Harry Potter doesn't even come close. All around the world, millions of lives are being transformed through this book. What is so special about this book that it's changing so many lives, that it is this bestseller? Well, tonight, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to take you through a multimedia presentation on the screen that will give you a summary of the central message of this beautiful book. Here we go. The Bible says that God is holy and heaven is holy, and holy simply means perfect. Now, it's really important to understand that when God made the world, He made people perfect to have a friendship with Him. The Bible also says that all of us have a body and a soul. And at death, your body's buried or cremated. Ah! (laughs) But your soul, the real you, lives on forever either in heaven or in hell, and there is no third place. Now, unfortunately, we do have a problem. Let me ask you this. Do you know of anyone who has never broken any of God's laws? Well, apart from Jesus, there is no one. And neither do I. So the problem is that if there's only two places for our souls to go at death, either heaven or hell, but to get into heaven, we must have a perfect record and nobody has one, then sadly, it seems like all of us would be headed for hell. Now, the thought of anyone going to hell saddens God because He loves us so much. And some people rightly ask, well, if God loves us so much, then why did He create hell? It's a good question. Well, let me explain. I want you to think in your mind of someone you really love and care about. Have you got that person in your mind? Yeah? This would be tragic, but imagine that somebody murdered that person that you loved. And after a huge police hunt, they catch the murderer. There he is in court, and he pleads guilty. But to everyone's horror, the judge says, well, I'm a loving judge, so I'm just going to let you off. Would you feel angry? Of course you would. Why? The reason we feel angry is because when someone has broken the law, there must be a punishment, otherwise there is no justice. And in the same way, all of us have broken God's laws. And if He didn't punish us, He would be exactly the same as that judge. Even though God is incredibly loving, He also has to be just. For example, who here tonight has ever told a lie? If you haven't got your hand up, you're lying. (laughs) We've all done it, haven't we? And technically, that makes us liars. We'd be guilty of breaking this law of God. Who here tonight's ever taken something that doesn't belong to them? A pen, paperclip, a cookie, made a phone call in their boss's time, stealing time? We've all done it at some stage, haven't we? Well, this makes us thieves, doesn't it? Again, we'd be guilty. Now, I know I've hated someone before in my life. Who here's ever hated someone before, even for a moment? Jesus said that if we've ever hated anyone in our heart, that it is the same as murdering them in our heart. It's like we've murdered them inside of us. So in God's eyes, you and I would be lying, thieving murderers. We don't deserve to get into heaven. Friends, we deserve hell, a place of punishment for breaking God's laws. And this is the bad news. But the good news is that God doesn't want anyone to go there. And this is where Jesus comes in and why he's so significant. Now, Jesus is the guy who split the timeline in two, into BC and AD. Christmas and Easter, which we're celebrating today, of course, is based on his life. Now, what do you notice is the difference here between Jesus' soul and ours? We are imperfect, but he is? You're onto it. Perfect. Now, imagine this. Before Jesus came to earth, he saw you. He said to God, he said, God... I love all the people at Australian Gospel Music Festival. They rock. I don't want them to go to hell. Is there a way that they can come to heaven? And God said, well, every single one of them have broken my laws. So there must be a just punishment. But I have a plan. 
Jesus, if you go to earth, become a human being, live a perfect life, and then die a cruel, painful death on a cross, you can take the punishment that they deserve in their place. And Jesus said, I'll do it. And he did it. Isn't that incredible? That is so amazing. It's like we've done the crime and he's done the time. He's paid the punishment in our place. It is now possible for every one of us to receive a perfect record from Jesus and make it into heaven. But the big question tonight is how do we actually do this? Well, according to the Bible, there's supposed to be a major event in our life between birth and death when we are completely forgiven for breaking God's laws. And this event is when we receive a perfect record from Jesus. And we call this becoming a real Christian. Now, we do not have this event by being christened or baptized or confirmed or praying or going to church or believing that God exists. These are all good things, but none of these give us a perfect record. The Bible's clear there's two things that we must do in order to have this event. The first thing is to be willing to turn away from everything we know to be wrong, like lying, cheating, stealing, sex outside of marriage, etc., Now, that does not mean we need to be perfect people, because none of us are, right? That's impossible. But it's a change in our heart when we sincerely desire to live life God's way. The second thing that the Bible says we must do is to surrender our lives to Jesus. Because if Jesus made you and the entire universe, He deserves to be in the center of your life. So surrendering is when you put Him in charge of your life. Now, let's say you have this event sometime in your life. Between that point and death, even though you break some of God's laws, you still have that perfect record in heaven because you're forgiven. Isn't that good? And when you die, you come before God at judgment and he says, welcome into heaven, my beautiful sons and daughters. I love you. And you say, but God, I broke your laws. Shouldn't I be punished and go to hell? And Jesus says, no way. I paid that punishment for you when I died on the cross. I gave you my perfect record that day when you turned and surrendered your life to me. Welcome into heaven. Isn't that beautiful? (laughs) Jesus has done something for us we could never do for ourselves. That's why he's a real hero. Now, the last part of this is a bit more serious. Say you never had that event sometime in your life and you died. You would come before God at judgment. Here you go. And say, I'm sorry, I really love you, but I can't let you into heaven. You don't have a perfect record. I have to be just and send you to hell. I loved you so much, I tried six ways to get through to you. Firstly, I died on the cross for you. Secondly, I sent Stu Miller along to AGMF at 7.14 on the 16th of April, 2006. And he explained to you why I died on the cross and how you could be forgiven. Thirdly, I gave you a conscience so you'd know right from wrong. Fourthly, there were good churches in the area that you lived. You could have found out about me through them. Fifthly, I created a world so beautiful, it was impossible not to know that I was there. And finally, I rose from the dead to prove that I was God and that everything I said and did in the Bible was true. And yet you just did nothing. I'm sorry. I can't let you into heaven. I have to send you to hell. Now, I want you to do one thing for me this evening. Please be honest. If everything I've told you tonight is true, and it is, because it's exactly what the Bible says, which has never been found wrong in 2,000 years, then what about you? If you were to die tonight, where would you go? Heaven or hell? Now, that's an incredibly searching question. Some of you tonight may be thinking, oh my goodness. I don't think I'd be going to heaven. That would be a tragedy for that to happen. God wants you into heaven, and he's made a way for every single person to get there. I'm going to take you through a quick review, because I want everyone to really understand this tonight. According to the Bible, what kind of a record do you need to have to get into heaven? You're onto it. Now, there's only two ways to get a perfect record. One is to be a perfect person, and we've all blown that one. The only other way to get a perfect record is by Jesus giving us his perfect record. Watch this. Nice. (laughs) 
And the only way to receive that perfect record from Jesus is to have that third major event we talked about in our lives. Now, can you remember the two things that we need to do to have that event? The first one was to be willing to turn away from everything that we know to be wrong and to surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. If a person turns and surrenders to Jesus, they can be absolutely certain they're going to heaven. But without that event in your life, it is literally impossible to get into heaven. And that, my friends, is so sad. Folks, when you came in tonight, each one of you would have received a booklet like this. This booklet here, it's called The Passion of the Christ, because the movie, a lot of you would have seen, was about Jesus dying on the cross, but this book explains why Jesus died on the cross. It goes through the presentation I've brought to you this evening, and the middle part, it shows you how to be forgiven, how to turn and surrender. If, you're, if you haven't had that event, I would encourage you to read this section on how to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. It goes through seven hard attitudes. And if you're right with God in these seven hard attitudes, there's a prayer you can pray. You can do this on your own, just you and God, or you can do it with a friend. But make sure you have this event where you surrender your life to Jesus. We're talking about the whole of eternity, not just a mere billion years. This is forever. This is an incredibly important decision. The last part talks about how your life changes after you become a Christian, like what God does for you, how he changes you, and helps you understand a bit more about who you are and why you do some of the things you do. Now, there's a website in the back. If you've got any questions, there's a website called answersaboutlife.com. It answers questions like, what about all the other religions? How can I know the Bible really is true? And so it's a fantastic website. There's also my details in there. If you want to contact me, you can email me and uh, let me know what you think of the book or if you have questions, I'd love to hear from you.